There have been several requests to cover Grand Admiral Thrawn and other Grand Admirals on the channel, but first I thought it would be a good idea to do a brief overview of the rank and those who held it within the Empire. It was first introduced by Timothy Zahn and heir to the Empire with Thrawn. But there were originally 12 other individuals who held the rank, so we'll start by taking a quick look at each of them and some of their important points, then quickly talk about Thrawn and finally Pelion. There were some other individuals who held the rank after Pelion, or even long before the Empire, but they're a bit farther removed, so while they'd be good candidates for videos later, we'll just stick with the other main Imperial ones here. The rank of Grand Admiral was first introduced within Palpatine's Empire in the New Year's Fet Week celebrations, two years before the Battle of Yavin, or BBY, with the appointment of 12 individuals to the illustrious rank. He also decreed that the rank could only ever include 12 people. Although the rank of Grand Admiral made these individuals the highest position within the Empire aside from Palpatine and Vader as Supreme Commander of the Imperial Forces, marking their rank with pristine white uniforms and gold epaulets, not all of them were appointed for their actual strategic or tactical ability, which caused some controversy within the Empire. Two of the twelve appointees were entirely on the basis of their political zealotry, being Ishan Raz and Anita Pita. Two were accomplished military researchers, if not the best of the Empire's military commanders, Marcio Batch and Dimitri Zarin. Four others, Afshin Makati, Pakati Sin, Niall Declan, and Octavian Grant, were from the military but were not necessarily locks for high positions they found themselves in based on skill alone. The four final members, however, were fairly universally accepted as the cream of the Imperial crop, and were nowhere near as controversial as the other appointees. These were Oswald Teshik, Joseph Grunger, Milton Tackle, and Rufon Tegelinus. After gaining this new rank, however, according to the Essential Guide to Warfare, only Grant, Grunger, Sin, and Tegelinus would continue their regular military service, while others embarked on different political or military projects. The first we're going to talk about was also the first of the Twelve to die, Demetrius Zarin. Zarin's primary role was within weapons development, and while Thrawn was given credit for designing the TIE Defender in the new canon, within Legends that honor goes to Zarin, along with the TIE Advanced and other projects. A few months before the Battle of Endor, Zarin staged a coup against the Emperor, hoping to install himself as the new ruler of the galaxy. This was able to go as far as successfully capturing Palpatine over Coruscant, which was kind of overdone by then, before being defeated by Grand Admiral Thrawn and Darth Vader. Following his defeat of Zarin, Thrawn took his place as the twelfth active Grand Admiral. Although Thrawn's tactical skill spoke for itself, the appointment of the very alien-looking Thrawn prompted some discussion, especially among the more bigoted members of the other Grand Admiral circle. This was furthered when Thrawn was exiled into the Unknown Regions, which many took as him being disgraced, and led to the New Republic assuming he was out of the picture before his return in the year 9 ABY when he launched his campaign against the New Republic. In reality, Thrawn had been sent to set up a new faction in the Unknown Regions, the Empire of the Hand, which would then cooperate with the Empire and the Chiss against threats like the Yuzan Vong. The Battle of Endor in 4 ABY proved disastrous for the Grand Admirals as well as the Empire more broadly. With Zarin dead and Thrawn setting up the Empire of the Hand in the Unknown Regions, four of the remaining eleven were present at Endor. Niall Declan, who was Force-sensitive and helped Palpatine coordinate the Imperial fleet during the engagement, was killed with the destruction of the battle station. While other commanders retreated, Oswald Teshik and his flagship, the Elim of Ceneri, remained and led the battle for three more hours before his capture, after which the rebels executed him. While some, including Makati, Sin, Tackle, and Tegelinus, would remain loyal for a time waiting for orders from whoever would succeed Palpatine and Vader. Others chose to carve their own territory from the disintegrating empire, or quickly met their end. Ishan Ilraz, who had dedicated himself to the promotion of the New Order, began randomly attacking Outer Rim worlds before flying his Star Destroyer into the Denaria Nova. Pakati Sin, despite his loyalty, would be one of the first to be killed by the rebels as they retook Kashyyyk, after sending out a call for help to the nearby Greater Maldrud, a break-off Imperial Warlord group under Trayton Teradoc. Batch, having earlier been disgraced by the destruction of his cloaking device projects at the hand of the rebels, was murdered by his own crew, who took his holdings to join Warlord Harsk in the Deep Core, 
Joseph Grunger was able to take over many sectors for himself with the use of his executor class Star Dreadnought Aggressor. But when he decided to conquer the Corellian Sector in the year 5 ABY, which had fallen under the control of fellow Grand Admiral Danita Pitta, the battle turned against him, and in a final act of defiance, he rammed Pitta's torpedo sphere flagship with his own, destroying the aggressor and killing both Grand Admirals. Grand Admiral Makati continued to take orders from Imperial Center, and was eventually killed trying to maintain Imperial control of the corporate sector. Tigellinus and Tackle's fate soon tied into the central committee of Grand Moffs on Kessel, who were trying to promote Trioculus, who claimed to be the son of Palpatine, to the Imperial throne in opposition to Isard. Tackle had originally been loyal to Isard and those ruling from Imperial Center. However, after he failed to take back the planet Gorgon from Joseph Grunger's forces, he fled to Kessel. Tackle, a heavy spice addict, soon became suspicious of Trioculus, and was executed as a result. Tigellinus did not last much longer. He'd gained the rank of Grand Moff in addition to Grand Admiral, and was offered a position on the committee by his rival, Grand Moff Hissa, although a demeaning one. On the advice of his friend Moff Dizra, who you may remember from the video on Yaga Minor and the fake Grand Admiral Thrawn, who was actually trying to set him up for a fall, Tigellinus refused the offer, and was murdered by the committee with Dizra taking his place as well as his other forces. As we mentioned, in 9 ABY, Thrawn finally reappeared from the Unknown Regions, at this point with just him and Grand Admiral Grant alive, and began his assault on the New Republic. Grand Admiral Grant had earlier joined the Penistar alignment under Artis Kane, because unlike the other Grand Admirals, he had generally stayed away from Imperial power politics, and therefore had no support base of his own. Two years after Endor, Grant had defected from the Penistar alignment to the New Republic, trading Imperial secrets for immunity. However, with the re-emergence of Thrawn, who Grant despised and believed he could best, he offered his services to the New Republic. The New Republic, for obvious reasons, didn't trust him, and with their defeat of Thrawn at the end of a grueling and hard-fought campaign, Grant remained the last Grand Admiral and stayed out of active service. The rank of Grand Admiral would remain solely with the retired Grant on the planet Rathalay for over a decade after Thrawn's death. Admiral Gilad Pelion would later take up the rank. He had been Thrawn's protege and became the supreme commander of Imperial forces after Dalla turned over the role to him in 12 ABY. Sometime after the Pelion Gavrisum Treaty between the New Republic and the Empire in the year 19 ABY, which ended hostilities between the two factions, he was granted the rank of Grand Admiral in conjunction with his role as Supreme Commander. After this point, the ranks of Grand Admiral and Supreme Commander seem to become in some way synonymous with each other, at least during Pelion's tenure. It's unclear when exactly he was granted the rank, but it was some point between that treaty and the Yuzan Vong War which started in the year 25 APY. Pelion would hold these joint roles until he was assassinated by the Sith Apprentice to Darth Cadus, Tahiri Vela, in the year 41 APY. During this time, he would remain the only Grand Admiral. As I mentioned earlier, while Pelion was the last person with the rank at the time of his death, depending on when Grant actually died, which is not really stated anywhere, but he was inactive, others would later have the rank under the Fell Empire and Crates Empire, such as Morlus Veed and Rolf Age, but those were different political structures, so I'm not really going to count it here for this video, although they could possibly become a video topic later on if anyone's interested. Either way, that's going to do it for this overview of the Grand Admirals of the Empire, so I hope you've enjoyed it. As usual, if there's any topics you'd like to see me cover, including any individual from this video who you'd like a deeper exploration of, let me know in the comments. I'd like to do a video like this for some of the major warlords as well, since that's a big thing we work on in Thrawn's Revenge. Anyways, as always, if you've enjoyed, please consider subscribing, leaving a like or a comment, it all helps the channel get out there a lot more, so thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.